This is the Pedigo Interceptor. I've reviewed it before, but that was a year and a half, two years ago, and a lot has, has changed and really been improved. At first glance, it's kind of the same great bike that it's always been. You've got this classic cantilever frame, uh, really sort of rugged, reinforced, the extra, extra tubing there, and a nice relaxed sort of seating position with this big oversized saddle. Very comfortable, it's got sort of rubber bumpers in addition to this seat post suspension, which is just, you know, really, really nice stuff. Nice to have that big oversized handlebars with these padded stitched grips and sort of rubberized brake levers here. And they've got the new Tektro ones with the integrated bell. I really like that. These Tektro brake levers do include a uh, motor cutoff, sort of a motor inhibitor, which is, which is really great because, you know, the little bit of a heavier bike and um, if you're a larger person, it's nice to be able to stop yourself immediately if you're using pedal assist. And speaking of maybe a heavier rider, this is the full size Interceptor. It's a fairly large bike and you can see it's kind of got that high step going on, but they also have a low step, sort of a step through. It's gonna be easier to approach. You don't have to swing your leg over and be careful if you try to do that because you can, I've clocked my knee on the, on the rear rack doing that before. And they've even got a mini scepter now and that's just the fun name. It's basically an interceptor, but with a smaller frame. If you can imagine the wheel is smaller, so that brings the hub down closer to the ground. And of course, it's also a step through frame design. So that's great. And the cool thing about um, all of these different designs they've got the high step or the low step is that they've got bottle cage adapters and you can use that for a mini pump you could use it for a cable lock or one of those like abus folding lock things or just a water bottle which is important you know if you're out on the town for the day you're cruising around it's nice to be able to bring some some stuff with you and along those same lines they've got a really nice really oversized rear rack set up here with just sort of a mousetrap type of a clip thing and I've never actually used this for much more than mail uh, but you know it's kind of nice to have it and I've, I've used the Basil panniers like kind of cloth panniers that'll hang down and they, they work really well because this is a little bit of a, a larger sort of a um, you know just a, it's a larger tubing size so if you've got those clip-on panniers they might not work with this you can see again it's just a little bit bigger uh, but it's once you do find panniers that work it's great because it sort of conceals the battery a little bit and gives this an even cooler just, you know, really relaxed cruiser type of look. The Interceptor is one of the most powerful bikes in the Patago lineup. Um, you know, they started out with these kind of classic cruisers, which this resembles, but, but the Interceptor was like, let's take it to the next level. You have the really sturdy tires here, the Schwabi Fat Franks with the kind of a Kevlar lining to help reduce the potential of getting stickers in there, flat tires and stuff. Great oversized kickstand that really holds the bike up well big again oversized pedals here and they used to be like kind of the Welgo aluminum alloy platform these look very similar but they actually say Pedigo and I think the bearings are um, you know it's it's a little bit nicer so real smooth and kind of grippy with those built-in nubs and of course as I mentioned before there's the tubing around the battery that that's gonna give it some extra protection you know this is a sort of like a plastic casing on this if it tipped it's nice to have some metal and just something surrounding it and giving it a lot of extra strength you can see it's attached here on the the seat stays and then that's almost like a little rubber band point if you've got one of those panniers that kind of can can lock on and uh, you know then down here with this nice big disc brake so they are mechanical uh, avid disc brakes 180 millimeter rotors back up with those tectro levers pretty easy to, to actuate and to kind of tune up if you need to you can even kind of twist this little you know there's like a finger adjustment thing right here so you can sort of adjust that yourself without tools if you need to you're out on the road i like that they've got just clean lines all all around you know the pedigo logo is nice and then interceptor the fact that it has a chain guard keeps your pants and stuff from getting greasy or getting snagged um, I have noticed that you know this this can get bumped and sort of bent if you're not careful so you know do be do be kind of conscious of that um, it's a little easier to do on this the step throughs because again there's not as much blocking it like there is here on this high step version seven speed Shimano Acera so you know it's kind of middle of the of the line you know not the highest end component but it totally gets the job done um, seven speeds is pretty pretty decent for cruising around town it's real easy to tell what gear you're in they've got this big oversized like thumb shifter thing um, I think in the past they've had some that had like twist shifting 
And that just, you know, it kind of gets in your way a little bit. This is very clear and like, you know, which speed you're in. It's real easy to see and it leaves plenty of room for the twist throttle here on the right. So, you know, all, all around just little improvements like that. I love that the interceptor comes with lights. So on the back, there's a light and on the front, there's a light and it's sort of attached here at the fork and you can sort of aim it if you need to. It's got a built in reflector, same with the pedals. So, you know, good stuff that way. And now they're using a 12 magnet cadence sensor. So you can see those right there, this plastic disc with the little dots, those are magnets. And by having 12 of them, you know, it's just a little bit more refined. Pedal assist is going to start a little quicker and it's going to, it's going to stop quicker when you discontinue pedaling. So just little upgrades like all around. The battery is one of the big selling points on the Interceptor. I mentioned it's sort of an overbuilt bike, it tends to be a little bigger and you know, it's got all the, all the fixins basically. The, the batteries are now only 48 volt. So there's a 48 volt 10 amp hour and a 48 volt 15 amp hour. And the 15 amp hour, it's basically just giving you more capacity. So you could potentially go further between charges. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's kind of cool. 48 volt systems tend to be more efficient at delivering electricity. And the battery they've got is really nice. It's got like a little voltage indicator here. So even if it's off the bike, you can tell how full it is. And that's really easy to do. You just twist the key here and then sort of slide on it like that pulls right out that's where it that's where it mounts you know it's nice looking whoa there we go it's, it's cool to see the bottom you can see the little on off switch so there is a built-in on off switch on the battery and that's nice just kind of keeps it from from draining there's the charging port right there with the little cover it's got a built-in fuse and i've got the 15 amp hour battery here you know it is a little bit heavier but it's just nice to be able to bring this inside with you and to to charge it or you know, reduce some of the weight on the bike because these are heavy bikes. I'm gonna go ahead and try to slide this back in. There we go. And it clicks right in and check this out. You don't have to leave the key in while you're riding. I love that because before some of the bikes, you kind of dangle your keychain, or if you have panniers, they can kind of be in your way, you know, that can bend this key. I'm gonna leave it in while riding so I don't forget though. So, you know, that's, I, I like the battery a lot. And I, I was mentioning like, Kind of care and service for the batteries the best way to manage this is going to be keep it in kind of a cool dry location if you live in the east coast and it's freezing out don't leave it out in your garage that's really bad for the battery and you're going to significantly de decrease the capacity even if you just left it overnight like the next day you go to ride you're only going to get like half the the distance that you could if the battery was kept in more of a warm environment if you live in a super hot place and it's like the desert and it's sunny and you know that's also really bad for the battery and it's just not going to get as many charge cycles as it would and the battery is kind of the most expensive part of the bike, you know, it's $800 for a replacement pack. Um, so yeah, keep it charged or try to maintain, you know, 20 to 80% charge, kind of keep it in that range if you're, if you're not using it. Um, otherwise just charge it up every night if you use it every day and then keep it in a, you know, decent sort of temperature range. That would be my advice. Uh, these bikes, you know, the, the lower end one, like the 48 volt 10 amp hour, it's like 2895 so almost $2,900. And then if you upgrade to that 15 amp hour battery, that's $3,195. So there's like a $300 difference for those extra five amp hours. And you know, they can get you a little bit further and stuff, but it does add weight. And this is already a fairly rear heavy bike. You can see, you know, the battery is hanging off the back. It's kind of up high. You do get the rack and everything, but it, you know, it, and the style kind of, kind of works, but just keep that in mind. The rear is also where the bat, the motor is. So it's a 500 watt geared motor. And Geared motors tend to be a little bit smaller in size. You can see it right here and lighter weight and stuff, but they do produce a little bit more noise. There's more, you know, there's gears, planetary gears going on in there. So there's a little bit more, um, you know, friction happening, but they do freewheel nicely. So if you're coasting, it's not gonna slow you down. Uh, as I mentioned, the 12 gauge spokes here on the, the tire or the, the wheel, um, the rim <laughs> are sort of like oversized so that this bike can accommodate you know 250 pound riders they've got pre-slime tubes and everything so it's really just supposed to be kind of trouble free especially with the kevlar lining however pedigo is also introducing like these new mag wheels like magnesium so you can see it's like a solid almost looks like plastic to me but it's it's kind of a lightweight metal and you don't ever have to worry about these going out of true and if you're a larger rider someone who's a little bit heavier these magnesium wheels are going to accommodate that weight. 
better. So, you know, up to like 300 pounds. Um, pretty, pretty good stuff. And I like the look of them. They kind of blend in. These bikes aren't super duper soft. Like there's no full suspension or anything like that. But when you look at these larger tires, like we were talking about, and then you look at the saddle and the seat post suspension and the larger bars, they kind of reduce vibration. They give you that sort of upright, you know, you're, you're you don't have to lean forward on this bike. You just, you're kind of like upright like this and you're able to stop spot traffic or enjoy the park. And I really love that. Some people do want to, you know, replace the seat posts though. There's like thud busters and different things like that. So I think this is 28.6 diameter, maybe like 350 in, in length uh, millimeters. So kind of keep that in mind if you're one of those people who's looking for even more comfort. Once the battery's charged and kind of mounted properly and everything, you make sure that that little toggle switch has been kind of clicked right here. Then you come up to the display panel, press that power button, and it comes to life. And there's actually, it's got backlighting, so if you just press the power button again, just once, it kind of does the backlighting and the, the lights and everything start working on the bike, so that's how that works. And then you've got, of course, your speed, your pedal assist level, your battery voltage. It's got five bars to kind of approximate that. There's a little icon for the backlighting. I'm gonna turn the lights off. You've got a, an odometer, a trip meter, and then a time, kind of a timer. So, you know, a few different options in there. It's kind of fun to, to tool around with. You can hold set and go through and change different things like wheel size and some of this other stuff. Um, neat that they've left it a little bit open. Uh, the display itself is not removable, but it does sort of swivel to help reduce glare. In fact, yeah, that looks nice. There's the backlighting there. Maybe you can see it. Um, and on the bottom, now they've got a USB port for charging stuff. So check that out, I love it here. There you go, maybe you can see it now. Yeah, just a standard USB port. So, you know, if you've got like your iPod or your mobile phone or something, you can just kind of hook it in and get a little bit more, more use out of it, especially if you've got that, you know, 15 amp hour battery pack. It's great to be able to, to tap into that. So all around, just really really great bikes for what they are now obviously this isn't like a mountain bike and there are there's a whole range of of cruisers and city bikes and stuff but for someone who wants that like relaxed upright position and wants to work with a good company i mean your pedigo has been a leader here in the united states for a long time they've really focused on this sort of aesthetic and they have a great warranty i think it's like a three-year battery warranty the first year it's totally covered uh, the second year and the third year they sort of like prorate it so if you have to get a replacement, they just make it cheaper for you. So I think it's a really neat program. You know, it's kind of clever. They, they don't want to be taken advantage of, you know, people like wrecking their batteries. And, you know, we talked about the cold and the heat and stuff. If you're not careful, yeah, the battery's not going to last as long. But these are uh, high quality Samsung lithium ion cells that should go, like in my experience, a thousand plus cycles if you take care of it. However, over time, they are just going to degrade it like any battery. So keep that in mind. It's good stuff. Um, so yeah, I might find another uh, little nice spot with a hill and stuff. I wanted to do some hill testing and I'm only like 130 pounds, but it's nice to just see this 48 volt pack in action. And, and actually the interceptor, the larger size, it feels really nice to me. But again, don't forget they got those other, the other sizes. And I think that's really, that's really appealing to me. So the total weight of the highest end interceptor here is about 61 pounds and again that's with the larger battery pack and the battery is about 8.8 .8 pounds so you know almost nine pounds keep that in mind you know I, I don't think a lot of people are gonna be carrying an extra battery in their backpack you might bring the charger with you and you can actually top it off pretty quickly if it's in the in the, sort of the lower range um, but when you're when you're almost full it takes longer to balance because there's like a battery management system and you know that tries to not over overcharge the cells which is important. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, you know, I power it on. It does have, uh, by the way, like an automatic shutoff, which is cool. So the bike will try to keep from wearing the battery down. Zero is a really cool mode. It's just pure throttle mode, uh, which is great. Like it sort of acts like a cycle computer. And then as soon as you twist the throttle, it overrides. And then in any of those other five pedal assist levels, throttle mode still works. You can, you can basically use the throttle and just override and it goes to hundred percent. So it, it constantly feels like you've got plenty of power. Um, I'm just gonna take it to the, take it to zero and um, show the motor real quick. So 
So here's the hill. You can see it kind of the sidewalk wraps around and it's pretty steep. It goes all the way up there. There's a beautiful view. Uh, as I've been riding the Interceptor, you know, it just reminds me of how zippy Pedagos feel. This is a Dapu uh, geared hub motor. And it's just definitely, you, you feel you feel the power instantly and you, you do hear it, but it's pretty satisfying. And um, you know, the cadence sensor, it's got those 12 magnets, but there is a little bit of delay and then a little bit of, you know, uh, over power, like when you're done. So it's great to have those, those brake levers. I was gonna try to show that maybe once I get to the top of the hill here. There we go. So I'm in assist level five, but again, the throttle works at all times. So I'm, I might just try to throttle it all the way up that. Again, I'm, you know, 135 pounds, so. And I'm gonna stop right here. You know, this is the hill. Yep. No problem. Beautiful. You know, we were going at maybe like 15 miles per hour during that climb, but not bad. Now here I'm gonna try to show you the, the cadence sensor, how it kind of starts and stops. You can clearly see the delay there, um, but you've you know you got the brake levers to work with, so that's great. Cool. So now I'm gonna hop on, uh, hop on the mag wheels and see how that feels. You know, a lot of times spokes they keep it a little bit lighter, but magnesium is a really light material, and uh, you know these might be a little bit more rigid. There's not usually as much flex, but it's kind of a cool pattern, you know, with those multiple blades and stuff. And you shouldn't have to worry about truing these wheels as much. They should just be sturdier all around. Here we go. Nice and, yeah, beautiful. Maybe do a brake test on the way down with those 180 millimeters. It does take a little bit more, you know, hand effort to pull them because they're mechanical, but 180 millimeters is, it's a lot to work with. It's good power, so here we go. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> awesome. Well, that is the Pedigo Interceptor. It comes in a bunch of different flavors, a whole bunch of colors. You can even choose your wheel color. There's like tan and gray and black. And you know, it's, it's neat that there's a, like a style component of this, but really my favorite part is just that the company has, has done a pretty good job with warranty and support over the years. And that you get something that's, that's a little bit different, kind of that cruiser feel with all the extra safety stuff with that nice upright, you know, ride position. It's, it's good stuff. So for the full write-up on this, all the specs and everything, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com.